Hey guys, it's Mei Mei and it's time to do another gift card holder. And today's gift card holder is an idea I've had for a long, long time, but I've never wanted to do the math. So I decided to do it and I'm going to share it with you. So here we go. We're going to make a belly band that slots around an envelope that holds that gift card. So here's where we're going to start. We're going to start with a piece of cardstock that is eight and one quarter long by one and three fourth tall on this side. Okay. And here's where we're going to score. We're going to score it at half an inch. We're then going to score at two and one fourth and five and seven eighths. I know we don't like eights, but here I just had to do it. And then at seven and three fourths. Okay. So basically you're going to have these two half inch scores on the end. Now here's what we're going to do. This belly band is going to slot into itself on these ends. So here's what I want you to do. We're gonna be kind of loose with these folds right here. And here's what I mean. I'm just gonna fold them over for now. I'm not gonna crease them or anything just yet. Just gonna fold those over. And if you've done this right, your two score lines here, your half inch should pretty much line up with each other, okay? But here's what we're gonna do to make sure they do. I'm gonna take this end and fold it back. And then I'm gonna take this end and fold it back on that half inch score. Now, as you know, I don't use like a really thin bone folder, so sometimes it makes my score lines kind of thick, and I want this to line up exact in the middle. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put those little guys together in the center. We're not quite there. And then I'm gonna crease. I'm gonna hold those together, okay? And then I'm gonna crease these ends where they are. And that way, I'm using all of that score mark, but I'm putting it where I want it, because I need this to meet in the middle, okay? Now, let's do some fun cutting, all right? So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take this little guy, and I'm gonna open this out. And where this half inch score line is, I'm going to eyeball a little more than halfway up and slice. Because remember, these are gonna slot into each other. So I'm gonna let the pattern of the paper tell me. So I went right to the top of that piece there. Then I'm gonna flip it around, and I wanna slice the opposite. So I've sliced here at the top, I wanna slice at the bottom here, just a little more than halfway up. So that way, these two pieces can now slot into each other. So if you're just wanting to know how to do a slot, just a little slot binding, you got it. That's a slot binding. But I wanna decorate this a little bit. I want this to be cuter. So let me show you what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna take this Christmas tree punch, which I think is adorable, but I wanna tell you, you can do this with any shape. I could see this being done with a snowman or with a star die would be really cute. Anything you have in your stash that you can get a simple kind of silhouetted shape like this will work. Now what I wanna do is I wanna cut this guy in half. So here's how I'm gonna do it. I flipped him over because the glitter side makes it hard for me to kind of line up. So I'm gonna cut him on the back side and I'm going to eyeball the middle of this just by putting my scissors in the middle of the trunk at the bottom and I'm just gonna let my scissors go right to the center of the top there so I end up with this tree in half. You see where we're going? You see? I bet you do. Okay, now I'm gonna come over here. Now what I wanna do is I wanna glue these guys down to the slot right where they meet in the middle so when this guy slots together, it's a Christmas tree that slots, not just the squares, right? Okay, so I'm gonna put some glue in this little area right here just where my tree is gonna really live. Okay, it actually hangs off a little bit. Let me go low and high. Okay, and now I'm gonna place this right to that center line. Now it doesn't have to be like super, super tight. It really doesn't. It can just be right close to that line. So I'm gonna lay that like that, okay? And then I'm gonna do the same on the other side with this guy. I'll glue him down here, just so I get some glue in there to hold him down. And now we get our whole tree back but we still have our little slot there in the middle to open and close this. Now here's something I will tell you out of caution from what I have already done. <laughs> Don't leave them sitting there while they dry. Open them up and you might just wanna pull them out like this and let them dry like this because if you do, they'll, they might glue together. Ask me how I know. <laughs> All right, so there's that part done. Let me put my pen in my glue. Okay, now that this guy has dried for a second, I'm going to trim away any of the red that hangs over the tree. Now, you don't really have to do this. It really depends on the background of the paper. This paper blends in so well that I really would not have to do this because you really can't tell the difference, but I just think it looks kind of cute, and when the person takes it off, it looks like a Christmas tree without all the backer. 
kind of hides your workings, if that makes sense. Somebody be like, how do they do that? Well, you can't really tell when we do it like this. So see, it looks like we actually did it on purpose, right? All right, I'm going to trim the other side just the same. So just cut out any little bit that is showing. If you do this in solid colors, like if you do this in solid white, solid green, like the band and the tree is the same color, it's absolutely beautiful, by the way. The tone on tone color and playing with shadows is really pretty with this. But I wanted to glitz it up. I wanted to use a little bit of glitter paper today. All right, so we've got this guy like this, and now that he has dried, we can slot him together. And look, we have a little slotted band. So easy to do, right? Okay, let me show you what's gonna hold the gift card. So I'm gonna use one of my absolutely favorite stamp sets. This one is called the Envelope, Please. And I'm gonna use this big envelope at the top. This set, you guys might not have seen it for a while because it's a really older set of mine, but look, you get three different sizes of envelopes to use. Love this for everything, gift card, Valentine's, you name it. This guy actually holds a gift card perfectly. I'll show you. He fits right inside that envelope. We actually designed him on purpose for that. So we're going to use him today. So what I've done is I have put him into my Misty. I've put that stamp onto my Misty. And I've cut for myself a piece of cardstock that's four and three-fourths by four and three-fourths. It's a little bigger than I need, but I can trim the edge in a second. All right, now I'm going to take my ink. And you can hardly see this. I tried to zoom in so y'all could see really good. So I'm going to ink this guy up. Now again, I'm going to give you some inking tips on your Misty when you have an image like this that has a lot of center space. Do you see how I'm getting ink in the middle right there? That is because I did not lay that down flat. Can you see that I've got air bubbles in there? So I'm going to press that air bubble out if I can because that will help me. That's a big air bubble. I'm going to have to lift that. Okay, so I cleaned that ink off that I put on, but I want to show you this. You see this huge air bubble I have in there? So I've got to get that out of there or it's going to make ink stamp where I don't want it. So I'm going to lift this corner up just like this so I can get down there. It's almost like laying wallpaper, which I have been doing a lot of lately, by the way, or hanging wallpaper. So just get that bubble out of there and that will help. There might be one down here. So I'm just going to lift up down here too. I usually try to pay attention to that, but this morning I just didn't. I got a little bit of fuzz on my stamp too. Wow. All right, prep time done. All right, now let's ink it. Now when you ink it with your air bubbles out, I still feel like there might be a little in there, but I'm gonna try. Ink straight up and down. Don't, don't tip into the middle. When you do that, you get ink where you don't want it. And if ink is where you don't want it, it will probably stamp where you don't want it. So once I got that air bubble out, I'm not getting any ink in the middle now, so that's good. So I'm just going to make sure that's well inked, but I did not poke into the middle, and that's what you want to do. Be nice and flat with your inking. All right, let's bring this guy over and get my impressible, and I'm going to run around. And I'm not over pressing. This is just a line image, so it's not like I have a whole lot that I have to get on there. So I'm just going to press it like so and pick it up, and it's stuck, which is good. That means ink was everywhere. Look at that. Looks good. Okay, let's take that little guy out. And now I'm going to trim him a tiny bit. I cut my page a little bigger than I needed. So what I'm going to do, i got to be careful because I use pigment ink. I need to give it a second to dry. But I'm going to put it into my trimmer and trim it down just a little bit. And I'm going to trim pretty close. I may even go around and trim everything that close because I like it to be right at the line. Personally, that's how I like it. So I'm going to trim this little guy up and then we'll fold him and assemble him. Now that I've got his sides all trimmed, I need to come in here and I need to make these little nicks. This is what helps your envelope fold well, is to make these little snips right here. And you'll notice that these little guys are not square. We did that on purpose. They're kind of angled and that's so you get a good fold on the envelope when you go to bend it. Now it's time to fold this guy up. Now you could score these lines if you wanted to. You could use your ruler to help you line them up, but I'm just gonna show you what I do. I just kind of put this guy upside down and I'll start on this bottom part. And I'm going to flip this forward until I see the inked line. And when I do, I'm going to stop like so and crease it down. It'll pretty much go where it needs to go because of the way it's cut. You see how it kind of stops right there? So it pretty much does what it needs to do. Now I'm going to tuck the sides in and do the same. And I just want to go to my solid ink line. So you're going to go to the one right past the stitches. Crease that one down. I'm going to flip around and do the other side. This is the easiest envelope, I promise. Easiest envelope you'll do. No fancy punching, no nothing. Now we're just gonna glue this guy shut. And I just run a little glue here and here. 
and then I close this little guy down just like so. And I love the way this little envelope lands. All right, let's fold the top. Same thing to the solid line. It pretty much knows exactly where to go. There's your little envelope. Let's put the gift card in it. So this little guy slides right in here just like so. Got a little bit of paper right there or something. All right. Oh. There we go. Got it off. And then this closes like this. And now we're going to use our little slotted belly band to close it up. So now let's put it onto our gift card. So here's my little gift card envelope. To put it on, I'm going to slide it on. That, just to be safe, right? Because this is a little bit tight. So I'm going to get it on here like this. But then I'll show you how the recipient will be able to open the little slotted piece, the little slotted piece here, our little tree. Let's get that laying in there correctly. There we go. So now it's flat. But then when the recipient gets it, they can just slide it apart like that and open it up. Isn't that cute? I think this is adorable. But the best part is I think you'll use this for lots of different projects. I think you'll find different ways to use it. It's a little hard to close back like this because it's so tight. Let me get that trail in there. Let's flip this up where I got it the right way. There we go. Because it's pretty tight on there, but you still can. You can see that you still can. But I just think this would be a neat idea to use for all different places where we need belly bands. If you need to wrap around greeting cards or whatever, but I just think it's cute. And I also love how the tree is so dimensional and it's not going to fall off. This is a great way to send something in the mail where if you don't want to use foam and you don't want it to fall off, this will keep it there. It's not going anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Super cute. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And as always, if you make it, I want to see it. So head to my customer gallery at maymaymadeit.com and share with me how you're making slotted belly bands. And don't forget to subscribe. And if you like this kind of video, give me a thumbs up so I'll know and I can keep bringing you more just like this. All right, that's another gift card in the bag. We'll have to do some more. Hmm, a gift card in a bag. Maybe that's the next one we do. Thanks so much for being here, guys. Until next time, bye now.